Okay, so let's talk about what it looks like to model integer addition. So previously we've talked about that integers are our set of whole numbers and their opposites. So positive and negative numbers and the number zero are all integers. And we're just gonna look at what does it look like when we add two different integers together, okay? So our very first one, we're gonna draw our tiles um, and there's nothing really here for us to, uh, used to fill in our notes. So I'm just going to come up with some problems for us. Um, let's say that our first tile is going to be four positives on top. And I'm just going to draw circles today because I feel like circles are easiest and I'm going to leave them unshaded to show that they are positive. So there are four positives and then we're going to do six positives. Two, three, four, five, six. So remember, I always want to start with the first number on the top second number on the bottom. So here are my tiles. And now I need to write an expression from those tiles. So this expression would be positive four or just four plus positive six or six. So four plus six. So for the value, I just need to count how many tiles there are because I don't have any negatives to create those zero pairs with. So I have four plus six gives me a value of 10. So our number line, what our number lines look like when we do integer addition is you're always going to start with the very first number in your um, adding expression. So my very first number is positive four. So I always start my number line at zero. So I'm going to draw just a straight up and down line at zero. And since four is positive and positive um, numbers go to the right, I'm going to move and draw a line that goes four spaces to the right. I'm going to put an arrow at the very end. So that right there shows a positive four. And then from that positive four, I'm going to draw another straight line right above it to show the start of my next number. And then I'm going to move six spaces to the right since my next number is positive six. So I'm not going to the number of six, but I'm going six spaces to the right. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And wherever that second arrow, arrow lands, that is the value of my expression. So that second arrow landed at 10, so I have a value of 10. For our second one, this time I'm going to start with four negatives. So four shaded in circles. And then I'm going to put six negatives right below it. Okay, so when I write my expression again, I'm going to start with the number that's up at the top. So that would be negative four plus, and then I have six negatives down at the bottom. But if I just write it just like this, it looks like negative four plus minus six. So what you're going to see is when they are um, negatives after an operation, so after a plus sign, after a minus sign, a multiplication sign, a division sign, if a negative follows it, they like to put parentheses around that number to show that this is a negative four plus a negative six. It helps us not get confused with a subtraction and a negative symbol. So negative four plus negative six. Um, again, I only have negatives here. I don't have any positives to make zero pairs with. So I just have a value of negative 10. So for my number line, again, I always start at the number zero. But this time, since my four is negative, that tells me that I need to go four spaces to the left. So I'm going to draw four spaces to the left, add that arrow. I'm going to put a straight line right above it. And then that negative six tells me to go six more spaces to the left. And again, wherever that lands, that is the value of my expression. So our value is negative 10. For our next one, I want to do, let's start with four positives. So one, two, three, four. But this time, let's add six negatives. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so when I write my expression, I'm still going to start with that first number, which is positive four. But this time, again, I'm adding six negatives to it. Let's use those parentheses to show that that's plus negative six. 
Now this time, since I have a combination of positives and negatives, I need to get rid of any zero pairs that I have. Remember, zero pairs are something that is made up of one positive, one negative, and when combined, they have a value of zero. So this right here is a zero pair. I can get rid of it. There's another zero pair. There's another zero pair. There's another zero pair. So all I'm left with is a value of negative two. Hmm. So let's talk about our number line here. I'm going to start always at zero. I have four positives. So that tells me I need to move to the right four spaces. But since I have six negatives, this time I'm going to move to the left six spaces. So again, I'm not going to the spot of negative six, but I'm moving six spaces. So if I go all the way back to zero, that's four spaces to the left. So one, two more. That gives me a total of negative six and it lands at negative two. So that is the value of my expression. One more we're going to do, let's do this time four negatives. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, and six positives. So I'm going to write my expression. This time I have negative four plus six. So I'm going to get rid of any zero pairs that I see. So one positive and one negative. Again, when you combine them together, they have a value of zero. And all I'm left with this time is a value of positive two. So when I do my number line, I'm going to start at zero. Since I have negative four, I'm going to move to the left four spaces. And then since I have positive six, I'm going to move to the right six spaces. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six. And again, wherever it lands, that is my value, and it lands at positive two. So looking at our expressions, we stuck with the same numbers. We had four and sixes throughout, but we changed whether they were positive or negative. So I want you, when we look at our expressions here, like positive four plus positive six, we got 10. Negative four plus negative six, we got negative 10. Four and negative six, and we ended up with the value of negative two, and negative four plus six, we got positive two. So again, all the same numbers that I started with, we just changed the sign. So I wonder how we ended up with such different values. Something to think about. Let's look at set two. So set two, this time they gave us the expression. They told us what they want us to do. So my very first one is going to be three positives plus one positive. So one, two, three, one. Okay, I don't have any zero pairs to make here because everything is positive. So my problem just has a value of four. So when I do my number line, as always, I start at zero. Since it's positive three, I move to the right three spaces. And then since it's positive one, I move to the right one more space. And again, it lands right here at positive four. Our next expression is negative three plus negative one. So that would be one, two, three, one. Okay, again, when I look at here, it's all negatives. I don't have any zero pairs to make. So this just gives me a value of negative four. So I'm gonna start at zero. Since it's a negative three, I'm gonna move three spaces to the left and then add negative one, so move one space to the left. And it lands at negative four. Okay, so here's what I'm seeing when I look at these two expressions and my two expressions from up top. It looks like when I have the same, like when I have two positives, four plus six gives me 10, three plus one gives me four. Everything stayed positive. So a positive and a positive just gave me a bigger positive. A positive and a positive gives me a bigger positive. But when I have two negatives, I have a negative four plus negative six, negative 10, negative three plus negative one, negative four. It looks like when I have two negatives, I still add those numbers together and I keep the negative sign in front of it. So still negative four plus negative six gives me negative 10. But something funky is happening when I add a positive and a negative together. So let's look at what's going on here. I have positive three, so I'm gonna draw three unshaded circles. 
plus negative 1. So again, I need to create zero pairs, one positive and one negative. And I'm left with the value of positive 2. So if I start here at 0, I have positive 3, so I'm going to move to the right three spaces. And then I have negative 1, so I'm going to move to the left one space. And again, wherever it lands, that is the value. So I have a value of 2. Huh. So how did I go from a number of 3 and 1, and I'm adding and end up with 2? My next one says negative 3 plus 1. So 1, 2, 3, and then positive 1. Again, I'm going to create my zero pairs, so one positive, one negative, and I'm left with a value of negative 2. So I'm going to start at zero, move to the left three spaces, since I have three negatives, stop, and then move to the right one space for one positive. Wherever it lands, that is my value, so I have a value of negative 2. So here's kind of what I'm thinking here, is... 3 and 1. Well, I know I can get 3 and 1 to get 2, but I have to subtract them in order to get 2. But this is an addition problem. So when I have different signs, a positive and a negative, a negative and a positive, when the signs are not the same for both numbers, really what I'm doing is subtracting, and I'm keeping the sign of the number that has the biggest absolute value. So remember, absolute value is the distance from 0. So 3, positive 3, is further away from 0 than 1 is. It has a bigger absolute value than negative 1. So we kept the positive sign. But down here, negative 3 has a bigger absolute value than positive 1, so we kept the negative sign. Same thing when we were up here with positive 4 plus negative 6. Negative 6 has a bigger absolute value than positive 4, so we did 6 minus 4, and then we kept the sign with the bigger absolute value. Same thing down here. Um, we have negative 4 plus positive 6. Positive 6 has a bigger absolute value um, than negative 4 does, so we kept the positive sign in front of it. Okay, so here's what I like to remember when we add integers. If I have two integers that have the same signs, so a positive and a positive or a negative and a negative, right? They're the same sign, the same type of integer. When I have two integers that are the same signs, all I'm doing is I'm adding the two integers together and keeping the sign. So if it's a positive plus a positive, I add those two numbers together, keep the positive sign. If it's a negative and a negative, I add those two numbers together, keep the negative sign. But if they're different signs, if I've got one positive and one negative integer, then really what I'm doing is I am subtracting and I say keep the sign with the most. Again, that's just the bigger absolute value. So if I have a positive and a negative and that positive has a bigger absolute value, I'm going to subtract and keep the positive sign. If I have a negative that has a bigger absolute value, again, I'm going to subtract, but this time I'm going to keep the negative sign. So different signs, subtract, keep the sign with the most. But same signs, you just add and keep the sign.